Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is gonna be our last update video for the plants that we have so far. And let me just explain to you guys what we will be doing in this video. Firstly, I'm gonna show you two species of Drosera that we have grown from seed as well. That is Drosera venusta and Drosera filiformis. After that, we will do an update on the tuberous Drosera, which is not with me. They're on the table like we did last time because there's way too many for me to hold and pick up and separate from each other. And lastly, we'll just go over all the plants one last time and give them all some fertilizer so you guys can see them again. But that's not gonna be the last update videos. Obviously, these plants are gonna grow more. We're gonna get more seeds and more plants over time. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you look forward to that. So let's get started on our Drosera venusta. So as you guys can tell, I'm sitting up against like one of the retaining walls of the house or something like the dividing walls because it is once again a windy day at least it's not raining but yeah this this is radiating some nice heat from my back and also it's so bright I can't film in the alleyway because I can barely see anything but yeah just another one of those videos for you guys so this over here is our Drosera venusta this plant is native to South Africa it is obviously very very happy I got this plant from seeds and obviously growing it from seeds there were only two or mm, between two to five plants that grew from the seeds obviously the two biggest ones are the main ones and from those seeds i harvested the flowers and i sprinkled the flowers on this side and that's how we got some more of these little plants now these guys are as i said south african growers it means they are cold growers or winter growers and that means that they like to be kept colder and just like most of our plants um these guys are actually growing on the table the flood table with all the other plants because even though they're like meant to be cold growers or whatever they're doing just fine on the table so i have not moved them into the shade with the other plants i actually might be wrong on them being cold growers or something but yeah they look really really good and it is the middle of winter right now so i don't know you guys tell me they are very very easy to grow for me you guys can tell they kind of look like Drosera aliceae, but the difference in aliceae and these guys is that Venusta actually grows upright. You can see their leaves are standing up above the ground, and that's a very big difference between them. Like I said, I got them from seeds. When we sowed them together, they came up pretty much after about two months or so. They've been super, super easy to care for. Like I said, they just stay on the table. They've barely eaten anything, but that's why we will be fertilizing them. And honestly, I haven't done anything else special for them. They're just in peat and perlite, like most of the carnivorous plants on our table. And genuinely, I don't do anything else special for them. If they catch their own food, that's them. But I haven't done anything else for them. But they look really, really good. They're so happy as well. These are definitely one of the rarer carnivorous plants that you can find, especially because it has location data. Yeah, I'm super happy with this guy. Next up, it is Drosera filiformis. Now, like I said, it is winter, so this guy is actually like half dormant, but because we've passed the winter solstice, this guy's coming out of dormancy. You guys can tell the little hibernaculars are shooting out their first few leaves, and that's when you know that your dormant plants, which form hibernaculars, are coming out of dormancy. And that is exactly what's going on here. This is Drosera filiformis Florida red, which means that they're actually very very red ones most filiformis aren't really red they're kind of greenish or orangey in color but these ones are red and i think they're also smaller than the other ones but i was always told that drosera filiformis the florida version was meant to be tr like subtropical and it doesn't go dormant but this one obviously did go dormant that's another weird thing but once again i got these guys from seeds from a cellar and we sewed them up i think it took them about a month for them to germinate or maybe two months and then they germinated this was like mid spring or mid summer they started growing and then it was winter and where i was staying before it was so cold that i think that's why they went dormant and they've just been dormant up until now like as you guys can see they've started to wake up now and i'm super super excited for them to actually grow because i've wanted filiformis for such a long time and i haven't been able to grow them properly for ages but i think this is finally the first time where we're going to have a very very happy colony of them and you guys might also notice the little Venus fly trap that's in the pot right there. This is, this is from when I was telling you guys about the seeds that scatter everywhere and go into all the wrong pots. We've got Venus fly traps in this pot as well. So 
It's a nice little surprise for us, I guess. Otherwise, this plant's super, super easy as well. It grows on the table in full sunlight and it's in peat and perlite. And genuinely, there's nothing else that I need to do for them. So that's it for the first two. They're super, super simple ones. Quick and easy updates, but on plants that I actually am excited for. Next up are the tuberous drosteras. As you guys can tell, there are a lot of them, which is why I left them on the table because I don't want to bring them all out and untangle them as well. These guys I got from a trade from someone I met online who actually lives here in Australia. I traded most of the seeds that I have of the South African species, like the Drostra venusta, for example. They are very rare species. And he was more than happy to give me tons and tons of tuberous drosera which we which he had and also seeds of some of these south american species we've already done updates on now most of the plants that are in these tall pots are tubers that he actually gave me they were already established big plants that mean meant that i had a very good start on the tuberous drosera because you know i had plants that were big established already and they have done so well for me that i am super super happy with them i cannot explain how worrisome it actually is for someone to get tuberous drosera for the first time most carnivorous plants grow in summer and spring but these guys are the opposite they grow in winter time and that means that there is a lot of difficult stuff that you actually have to think about when you want to get these plants first off they need tall pots because they have long roots and i was able to find these tall pots if you guys want some pots and you live in australia i do sell them so you can contact me if you want some you need some tall pots for them because they have long roots on top of that you need the correct soil which is very very important for tuberous drosera these guys are native to australia and the sands in which they grow in i just gave it away is very sandy so the ratio that i was using for these guys is a ratio of one is to two of peat is to sand sorry it's very windy the camera's on a fall so these plants needed very very sandy soil and of course it was the first time that i've really grown these guys and i was super worried that the soil i was going to give them wasn't exactly what they needed but i still just went along with it and i followed the instructions given to me by the guy who gave me these plants the next thing about them is that in summer time springtime basically when they're dormant they need to be bone dry you cannot really give them any water because if you do give them too much water they will rot away and that happened to me in the past when I bought some and I was still living in South Africa I didn't know and they ended up rotting away so you need to make sure that you get the watering right and when it does come time for them to grow which here in the southern hemisphere it's about mid-march you water them water up their trays get the soil wet and well, not wet like damp then they'll start growing again and once they start growing is when I put them back outside onto the water table where they can get lots of water and lots of sunlight so they can actually grow and just trying to wrap your head around that concept of the soil and the watering and their dormancies is very very difficult but we have been very very lucky that we have got every single plant that he has given to us to actually grow including all of the seeds that he gave us we got almost all of the seeds that he gave us to germinate we have been very very lucky with these guys maybe it's the fact that we're living in the same continent that they're from but the climate where i stay is different to where they are native to so yeah, these guys, they are very, very beautiful. They grow very quickly because they only have winter to grow and I couldn't be happier with these plants. So that's the update on the tuberous drosera for you guys. Sorry guys, I didn't get that on camera for you very well. I didn't expect it to close like that, but it's doing exactly like the Drosera Hilaris. It's just literally been like five minutes and look how closed up it is already. So yeah, sorry about that guys. But um, now we know for next time, I can do a proper time-lapse when they're open, open back up. But now let's go do a final look at all of the plants in the collection. So before I started recording, I sprayed all of the plants with fertilizer on the table, kind of, because it's so windy, they barely got anything. But I can barely see any plants that actually hasn't reacted to the fertilizer. Most of them 
have actually curled up around the fertilizer that was there or they've gone dry which means that they have actually absorbed the fertilizer check it out check this capensis here these guys are super super sticky but it's all curled up on itself because it's obviously eating the fertilizer and quite a few of them have done that obviously the ones that actually got it even these little guys here our drosera calinciae they've gone dry well not really dry but they just aren't sticky anymore because they've absorbed the food that they've just gotten and that's actually you can see it on some of these guys here too it's curled around on nothing some of these plants down here as well this is the one this is the venus that i was just telling you about that we just fed this is the Elysiae that we have. Same thing, it's all curled up. So yeah, fertilizer really does work well. I think, I think we're losing a Drosera capensis over there. Huh. Either, either a very red orange plant or it's dying. So, and especially on our tuberous Drosera, none of their leaves are sticky anymore like what they were when I fed them earlier, so. That just goes to show that the fertilizer really does work. But yeah, this is the plants. I hope you guys enjoyed the four part series of the updates. So I'll catch you guys in the next video. See you guys then.